Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad, and today I'm very honored to speak with Uri Klarman. Uri is the CEO of a very exciting blockchain startup company, and that is called Blocks Route. Uri, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for having me. So obviously as a CEO, you have a very important role. Let's find out about you though, firstly Uri. Clearly you have a lot of credentials to be positioned in this role. So tell us a bit about yourself, mate. So, um, I'm coming from the world of computer networks. So my PhD is in computer networks. And uh, this is really, before being a crypto guy, I'm really a computer network guy. Right. So I'm um, coming from Israel. I worked a few years in, um, in the Israelis, like high tech companies, et cetera, et cetera, being a software developer. And then I decided I want to move to the academia and I had really no ambition, nor like I had no intention at all to mm -hmm. do a startup, let alone in the blockchain like psycho like environment. Right. But we came up with this idea, and then we had no choice but to make a startup because it was too good of an idea. Someone had to do it, and I did not trust anybody else to do it like the right way. So what we formed Blockstar Labs. Okay. So clearly, what is interesting is you have done a PhD. So you're well and truly uh, well versed in the academia. And so I'm actually like, like just to be on the 100 percent precise on that. So mm -hmm. I'm currently my, my my thesis and my per is is about include also the work of Blockstrap Labs mm -hmm. and it's currently being like finished up. I'm, I haven't received officially my PhD yet. Okay. I just want to be. Oh, thank like, you. For... I don't want to take any any, any mm -hmm. like credentials that I don't have. Sure, and we appreciate that. It is certainly clear. Also, having read it on your website, that you are in the process of finalising that dissertation. But congratulations on the work so far, because it is very focused on what you're doing right now. So let's talk now about your project, Blocks Route. What a name! It clearly has a specific purpose. Let's find out what it is in a nutshell. So, in a nutshell. Um, we realized that the scalability problem that everybody are talking about it mm -hmm. is in fact a networking problem. Because if you imagine that if somehow in some magical way, blocks would instantly propagate through the system, through all blocks, and I mean kind of like faster than the speed of light, could never happen in reality. Mm -hmm. But if they could, then we could do very large blocks at very short time intervals until mm -hmm. hardware fails at half a million transactions per second or something like that. So mm -hmm. the idea for Blocks Route is to solve the network, the networking bottleneck underneath the blockchains. Okay, so we, we want to be kind of like the Akamai of the blockchain. We mm -hmm. want to bring well-established networking techniques that already exist today, that we use them. This is how YouTube sends terabytes of data to hundreds of millions of people all around the world right. using very known techniques. And we want to use them underneath the blockchain, remove the bottleneck and allow all blockchains and all cryptos mm -hmm. to scale. Well, let's talk that's what Blockstart is doing. Let's talk about that a bit more because that is exciting and that's what sets you apart from so many scalable solutions for enterprise and the business, uh, uh, I guess right now with decentralized F, um, business endeavors, particularly on the blockchain and with uh, ledger technology. So you want to essentially work with what arguably would be the layer zero, the TCP IP style approach for the decentralized business player. So that, that's, that's a very nice way of putting it. This is really it. Rather than working on layer one, which is, okay, I'm trying, everybody are trying their own consensus protocol and trying mm -hmm. one is slightly better than, than the other, et cetera, et cetera, or layer two protocols, which are even more sophisticated and hard to do. We really want to work underneath, kind of like resolve the bottleneck mm -hmm. and then allow for the, and we want to collaborate with all cryptos and all blockchains out there. We want to solve it for everyone and kind of like provide this service for everyone for free. Right. Well, that's clearly, in terms of use case, not only are you thinking about businesses, but you're also thinking about the multitude of blockchains that emerge because you arguably will cater for them all. So, yes. So, our goal is the following. We really, or let's say differently. The scalability problem affects everyone, and there are solutions for it, but they end up being ruining the entire idea of a blockchain. So you mm -hmm. can get scalability in a centralized system, right? If you have a single entity controlling everything, you could do scale, but you just lost all the trustless properties hmm. of the blockchain. So the idea, what, what really sets us apart, is what we try to do is bring the performance that you can get 
in a sing by using a single entity, but built it in a provably neutral manner. Okay, mm. we don't want to lose that trustlessness, and that's what really sets us apart from the others. I so see. yes, we our goal is really to serve everyone out there with, with our solution. Right, and in that context, could you just broach a few of those permission designs? Because obviously there are some that you certainly would know of in your, with your expertise that are scaling in, in the direction that you're heading, but they are designing really to be a closed database. So, so let's, be, let's before diving into that, how about we go and talk a bit about the scalability problem? Sure. Okay, because I want to identify, it's very important to identify the problem so you could really show a solution for it. Right. And surprisingly, despite being a very easy to understand problem, a lot of the, like most of the people presenting it don't do such a good job about what is it, what is the bottleneck, what is the problem. Right, well that's the perfect segue into these questions. So you've mentioned about the bottleneck, but let's address also how you allow for nodes to maintain consensus and also your mining component. Those three things are key to your design. So, so there is no, okay, let's, let's go over it from yep. so top to bottom and you'll be in charge of like making sure I answer all three of them because awesome. while talking I'll forget. I'll no forget problem. all about it. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so the idea is the following. The network is the bottleneck for scalability because, let's, let's talk about Bitcoin for a second, okay? Just because everybody knows no it, the golden standards and kind of like, if you, if you can solve it there, you can solve it for the rest of them as well. Right. If, we're, if you want to do 10 times more transaction per second, one of the, more, most basic steps that you can take, one of the two steps that you can take is increasing the block size by a factor of 10 to mm -hmm. move from one megabyte to 10 megabytes. And what happened when you do that is that the time it takes for a block to propagate through the system increases by the same factor. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you imagine how blocks propagate out of there, mm -hmm. if you now have to uh, propagate 10 megabytes rather than one megabyte, it's going to take 10 times longer. Mm -hmm. And in total, the time it takes for block to propagate is also going to increase by a factor of 10. Right. And in, in total to everyone. And that is important because that propagation time is a time in which forks occur, right? Not Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, hard fork kind of thing, but really a fork when I mine a new block, when despite somebody else already mined a new block. Mm -hmm. And so now we have two blocks which were mined approximately at the same time. That only happens mm -hmm. if I have failed to hear about the other block in time, right? That only happens during the block propagation time. Right. So you, you could scale it by one order of magnitude, but if you try to do two orders of magnitude, so 100 megabyte blocks, at that point, it takes so long that you see so many forks mm that the blockchain breaks. All you see is forks and forks of forks and forks of forks of mm -hmm. forks. So that's the scalability problem. Mm -hmm. And it is really related to the time it takes for information to propagate through the system. Mm -hmm. Now, your, at, your question was about um, which centralized system, which scaling solutions are out there already, and how does that relate to trustlessness and neutrality? Yes. So there are already two great systems out there which helps propagation, and Fiber and Falcon. And these are relay networks, which is a very simple primitive, right? Mm -hmm. You take a block, you send it to Falcon, for example, and it's broadcast it to everybody connected. Right. And as you can imagine, that's very efficient, great, we solved the propagation time, everybody are happy. Mm -hmm. That's actually what's being done today. So the reason the propagation time is what you see today is because it's being used. Now, those are mm -hmm. great systems, but they have an inherent problem. Now I, I'm going to answer your question. Great. Who, whoever controls the relay network can really decide what goes on the blockchain and what doesn't go on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to give one block faster to one miner and slower to another and rejects blocks coming from one guy or even ban completely some wallets because he's going to reject any block that's coming from these guys, mm -hmm then these blocks would, can, as we just established, they can just propagate through the system. It's too slow. Mm -hmm. That peer-to-peer -peer part is too slow. So you can really help with the propagation time mm -hmm. and how information flows through the system, but you're going to be losing on the, you're going to lose the trustlessness. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to have to trust the relay network. 
I see. And it's and it's kind of silly because if the blockchain require everyone to place trust in in a single entity in the middle of the blockchain, mm. then what's the point of the blockchain, right? It, Just keep the bank in the middle. Exactly. It's almost counterintuitive to the very design core of decentralized architectures. It's not almost. It's exactly that. The idea mm. that everybody has to trust some entity to do the networking part mm. really breaks everything. Mm. Okay, but, so that's... Let's talk about this. Well, I want to ask you this in context because obviously we need to move on from the original ideal of decentralization because we've seen the damage that can play in business as well because many businesses are not uh, supportive of this idea of a, pur a puristically de decentralized design. So how does that play out in the context of business when they do have demands and they do want a degree of control? So, so that's actually, you bring up a very interesting like point. I, I, I planned on touching it later. Right. But if you talk today, last I heard, I might be wrong, but last I heard, if you talk with the IBM Hyperledger guys mm. who are really approaching like these businesses that you're talking about, sure. and um, someone described them to me as like, they're called, their approach is kind of like, we're, we're, we're the, the Ethereum for adults, right? We're not the crazy Ethereum young guys who are doing that. We're the Ethereum, like, we're very serious people. It's kind right. of like that's the general, which is fine. I, I, like, nothing bad about it. Mm -hmm. Then, as last I heard, these guys tell their customers, okay, those who want to run nodes, that if they want scale, they need to run their nodes on the data center of IBM or Hyperledger, depending on that. Okay. So they actually, ha if they're all sitting in a single data center, then you could really do scale. But if these nodes are sitting on the infrastructure of the customer, so if you're a bank mm -hmm. and you want to run a node, well, regulators are not going to allow you to run that node on somebody else's infrastructure. Regulation is going to tell you, you have to run it on your own. Mm. So despite the fact that you, you, like you're a bank, you can afford a good bandwidth, right? You can really afford all of that. But take it from the Hyperledger guides that they know that if the bank, if their clients are doing that, if the nodes are running in the wild, okay, in the infrastructure of their clients, mm -hmm. scalability, it, it simply doesn't scale. From the same reason, okay, it takes too long for information to propagate from place to place and for the entire system to synchronize on what was the last block. I see. And that's what sets you apart because you don't have to sell that idea that there's a requisite for central control via mechanisms as you've alluded to with companies like IBM. In fact, the real asset you have is you can achieve all the scalability and not compromise that autonomy of the user that, and also the controls that the consumer essentially can have utilizing services like this whereby there is no core, uh, I guess, or central unit that is the dictator. So, so, so yes, but it's even further than that. Okay, we are enablers. Our job is to enable other crypto and other blockchains. We don't have a crypto of our own. We are not here to compete with any of them. Right. The idea is to say, we're going to come to all of you and we're going to remove the bottleneck. Mm -hmm. What you guys, and you guys mean the different crypto communities and developers and miners and, and blockchains and blockchain businesses, that's your decision what you want to do with this potential. Mm -hmm. I, we re help you remove the bottleneck. It's open source. It's completely free. It's protocol agnostic. So you don't have to change anything in what you do. We give you a small piece of code that you run on your own machine that acts like just a, another peer, but it's super fast. Mm -hmm. So... We give that to everyone, and then it's a decision of the different cryptos what they want to do with it. Right. If some crypto want to do 300 megabytes every 30 seconds, now they can. Okay, If they want to do 100 megabytes every 10 seconds, maybe they can. We'll need to figure out exactly what are the time limits, but definitely orders of magnitude more than happening now. I see. So our idea is working underneath the blockchains. All the trustless properties are there. But just rather than take your block and send it through AT&T or Comcast or whoever is your internet service provider mm -hmm. who's going to provide you this service, we're saying, I can provide you this service only a thousand times faster, but and also in a provably neutral manner. Mm -hmm. Now, what does provably neutral actually mean? It means that the blocks route can only propagate all blocks coming from all nodes to all nodes fairly 
right. without discriminating or censoring based on where is it coming from, where is it going to, or what it contains. Mm -hmm. And that's an exciting feature. You know, it's highly equitable, equitable design as well. But again, again, moving back to this idea of blockchain itself, what is important is that being a layer zero design and agnostic, you're not actually a specific blockchain. And that is, it is what sets you apart. And I'll explain what I mean. When we are talking about layer one, often there's a coupling between layer zero and layer one. Okay, some examples are Aeon, for example. You know, it is designed to be an interoperable protocol, but it also has its own blockchain design that is a service, essentially. So you're, just, you're really designed, uh, essentially, to interconnect blockchains as much as be your own uh, blockchain technology. So it, it is really that. So we're going to allow every blockchain by, by itself to scale. And blockchain could be crypto and it could be a permission blockchain, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And every, anything that is doing stuff which are interoperability, then fine. We're, we're really here to provide it for everyone. Sure. And to an, extent, to an extent, we don't care who wins. Okay? Our idea is to provide it for all of them. Mm -hmm. And my personal perspective is that that's the point where crypto space turns into the Colosseum of crypto. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the point where crypto should really compete mm -hmm. on getting real world traction, providing real value to real people in the real world. Okay, mm -hmm. not like some speculative instrument that everybody keep playing and kind of like gambling on what's right. going to happen. And that's, what, that's why really, you're so excited about it as well, because you can see the real world application. You're not here so, to, for short term gain. Like definitely not for short term game. That's like the far furthest thing from from where we stand. Mm. We're actually so so Blockstrap Labs was was created by four co-founders. So we have Professor Emin Gunsir. So Gun, what like I don't know if you say the leading crypto expert in academia or among. So you have Andrew Mill. You have like several um, ETH Zurich have some good research. But you have some a few of them, but mm. definitely at the top front. You have um, um, Sumya Besu, who built the Falcon Network. So he knows a lot about relaying blocks and kind of like creating, like mm. really helping the blockchain system. And, and these are people in your team as well, Uri. The, these are my co-founders. These mm. are the teams that are building everything that we're doing. Mm. Um, third, we have Professor Kuzmanovic at Northwestern University, right. who's a net neutrality expert. So NSF Net Neutrality Award, these kind of like Google M Labs Steering Committee, these kind of things, and myself. Right. And we are really here for the long run. Okay. Our idea is to say we're going to scale everybody, not okay, because I'm trying to do like this pump and dump kind of thing because I can persuade you here's a cool idea. Sure. We're actually not going to raise any money before we can actually show mm -hmm. that we that we're scaling crypto. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our idea is to show a large a large crypto network that is actually processing large volumes of transaction per second before we do anything else because that's what our like i don't want you to believe me that mm. we can i'm going to show you I a large real net crypto network so you and only then right so you want to be empirically driven you want to do the work first and then show the value like second it it's it's it has to be that way because currently we're presenting this idea and i'm getting all sorts of responses we get tons of good feedback okay mm -hmm. really people are very excited about it mm -hmm. cryptos approach us and they want to use us etc mm. but i also get these feedback some of them from really good people okay people who know what they're talking about they're very professional that they oh i don't think that makes sense um Sia coin has too many IO operations and that's really what's stopping them and you're, you're, you're never going to be able to scale that. Right. And there, they might be true sp specifically for that. There might be blockchains that have other bottlenecks mm. so their design doesn't scale. But I can argue about that until, until I go blue, right? <laughs> and it's kind of like, I, like, oh, I'm going to say that and then I'm getting a response, no, but this is a small world kind of like... like mm. um, 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 Mm -hmm. um, um, design and kind of like topology and you don't understand how many hops. Trust me, if there's something that I know is computer networks, but there's no point of me like trying to argue and persuade you. I'm mm -hmm. going to show you mm -hmm. a network that works. And until I do, then this is all just words and saying. Mm -hmm. It's all about showing. Sure. That's our perspective. And, and clearly that's the whole point of what you're doing right now is that you are in the process. You're not at the beginning. You've already certainly undertaken the beginnings by initiating the project. And we're going to unpack just how far you are ahead with your roadmap. But let's pull it back to the mining contingent as well. 
with regard to the importance mining plays in your design as a, another core feature. Let's talk about that with regard to transactions per second, particularly, um, you know, in your capability. So, so from our perspective, or first of all, miners control what happened to the blockchain. Mm -hmm. They are the one to create the blocks. From our perspective, their role should not change, mm -hmm. okay? There, are, there is value to running your own node if you're a very large player, uh, uh, whether it's at, if you're a payment processor or something else. We don't want to touch that model at all. Okay. That should remain as it is. Our idea is the following. Take the networking there, remove the bottleneck there, and leave all that decision, all that like, oh, does that change? What, what are the requirements for miners? Do we want to decentralize it or are mm. we okay with pools or what do we want? These are the decisions for the different crypto and the different communities to decide. Mm -hmm. And they're going to come up with different models and they are going to compete with each other. And mm -hmm. those which make sense would actually succeed, like succeed in the real world and get traction. Mm -hmm. And those who don't make sense will vanish over time because they don't add value to people. So while we have our thoughts and ideas and we're more than happy to share them and, and kind of like give advice to those trying to create new projects, that's not our laser focus, okay? We have tons of ideas of stuff we want to do on the blockchain, sure. but what we're focusing is really about where we're moving the bottleneck and we leave and, and nobody has to change anything in their protocol, really no change to the protocol at all. You run the node, it works as it is. Okay. But if your community want to change something and increase the block size by three orders of magnitude or reduce the time by a factor of 100 and increase the size by a factor of 10 or whatever it is that you want to do, mm -hmm. then we want to allow you to do that. Okay. So clearly you want to be have proportionate uh, propagation and you also want to remove the bottleneck. Let's talk about the three things and explain how. And you've mentioned them very clearly in, you know, in the discussion so far, but let's unpack it further. The key three are no protocol, prov provably neutral, and also your gradual development. So let's just explore the things that you haven't touched on so far. Sure, that really but it's, complete it's, that. Gra it's, it's, it's gradual deployment. Oh, sorry, my apologies, right. deployment. No, no worries, but yeah. the idea is that, oh, I don't want a consensus for everyone to understand it. So let's talk about Blockstart for a second. Yeah. And I'm going to explain to you, it's super simple mm -hmm. how we do the thing that we do. And it explained all the three features that we add. Okay. So the key feature of what we want to do is the following. If you run a node, I'm going to give you a piece of open source code. That's your magic gateway. Mm -hmm. Do not change anything in your code, anything in your implementation, or anything in your protocol. Take that code and run it on the same machine that you run your node and add it as an additional peer. So okay. your node is connected to this peer and this peer and this peer. Now it's connected to this friendly neighbor. Okay, mm -hmm. It's a peer that sits on the same machine. Right. And it acts just like any other peer only whatever you send to that peer is being propagated super fast to everybody else connected to okay. Blocks Route. And everything else and all blocks by others, you will hear about them from your magic gateway before you hear it from any of your peers. So this is protocol agnostic. You don't have to change anything in what you do. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a consensus for everyone to say, oh, you know what? Let's start using Blocks Route. Sure. Whoever want to reduce their block propagation time can start using it mm -hmm. and they immediately. And those who don't want to use it can still not use it. And the result is going to be that whoever uses it has faster block propagation time. Mm -hmm. And actually, those who don't use it also benefit because if everybody else are faster, it means they will get blocks faster. But that's their decision. Our right. idea is to provide it. So okay. it's gradually deployable. You don't have to start to think what you want to do with it. Okay. It requires no protocol change. Okay. So that's also that. And the and and at that point, you really don't have to change anything. All all we do is make sure that information and blocks propagate very very fast to everyone. Okay. And then it's up for the community and the developers to decide what they want to do with it. Okay. Well, now for the most, you certainly make it sound so simple. You know that it 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 is really simple. Okay. I'll say, uh, let, let me finish this argument and then mm -hmm. I'll say something about the value of simple solution in comparison to complicated okay. solution. But the real novelty is not from the performance that we bring, okay? We bring three or like, like we can allow a thousand times more transactions per second using the simplest schemes mm -hmm. and we can do one or two orders of magnitude more using more sophisticated data structures. Right. But these are honestly 
not very sophisticated schemes. These are schemes which are well known in the networking domain for a while now. Mm -hmm. Our true novelty comes from how we make it provably neutral. And provably neutral, we achieve using, again, very simple technique. The idea is the following. How do we prevent block chart from discriminating based on the content of the block? How do we make so I don't want block chart to be capable of saying, oh, these wallets are now bad. Right. Okay, whether because block chart is evil or because law enforcement, like, I don't know, the, the, the law, law enforcement um, forces force me to do something or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want block chart to have the ability to discriminate. Mm -hmm. And the way we achieve that is super simple. You t when the magic gateway gets the block, first of all, it shrinks it considerably, okay, okay. to make it go faster. Much, much like a zip file. On the performance side. Much like a zip file. In so yes, but even simpler than that. Take okay. every 540 bytes transaction, turn it into four bytes. Okay. That's, like, that, that, that's just half of the performance that we bring. Right. But the, the novelty part is take that and encrypt it and send it to everybody through blocks route. Mm-hmm but encrypted. So Blockstout doesn't know what's in there. So it can, it can discriminate based on the content of the block. I see. And only after the other magic gateways receive it and you hear from them, so they notify each other about bl encrypted blocks that they receive, only after it was received by your peers, which only you know who they are. You don't tell it to others. Mm -hmm. So once, once they tell you, you send out the encryption key, which allowed to, to decrypt it. So you send it, that goes really fast to everyone. So that's mm -hmm. not a problem because right. it's tiny. And so the knowledge of what's inside the block is only revealed after everybody has already got it. So it's too late to, to take it back, right? Blockstart can not prevent it from reaching everyone mm -hmm. because then it's too late already. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to reveal the content only after it has been propagated. Right. So that's how we how we prevent discrimination based on the content. Right. And in order to prevent discrimination by, um, uh, based on where a block is coming from or where is it going to, mm -hmm. then we allow, rather than send something directly to blocks route, you can relay it through one of your peers. So you don't have to directly interact with the blocks route. So blocks route doesn't know where the blocks are coming from. I could say something like, oh, I don't know, I don't like South America. I'm going mm -hmm. to prevent all blocks coming from there. I don't know, because I woke <laughs> up feeling anti-South okay. America. Right, for okay. Some right, something silly like that. Right. But South America nodes can relay their blocks through a like Australian node mm -hmm. or a European node or some of those, and blocks are, won't know where is it coming from mm -hmm. or what, what it contains, right? So we can't discriminate based on that. And also on the receiving end, you could, rather than receive from Blockstart, you can ask your peers to send it to you. So we can't discriminate. You're running a node, and I really don't like your brand. Mm. So <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm going to send it to you slow. But you'll be receiving it from your peers. So Blockstart doesn't know what it contains, where is it coming from, nor where is it going to. And these are the provable. This is how we make it provably neutral. Okay, these are. At the end of the day, very simple thing. I think I was able to convey them clearly enough. I think so. And essentially, but, you're really trying to remove that central core and core control. Core control. is that, So what we're doing is we're reversing the direction of the trust. Yep. Rather than everybody yep. trusting Blockstrout, yep. Blockstrout blindly serve everybody else. And to an extent, it can be abused because of that, mm -hmm. because we send stuff blindly. But it's robust enough to withstand such such abuse, so we don't care about that. Right. But this is exactly that. We get the benefits and the performance of a centralized system. Without while being on one. On the other hand, we, but, but we remove the trusting part and, the tr and, and, and make us provably neutral so we can't abuse it, because that's what we really want, right? Mm. I don't care if it's centralized or decentralized. I want the properties. I want the features. I want mm. no, I, I, I want to avoid single point of failure. I want to avoid um, 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 unneutral behavior. I want to sure. avoid censorship and discrimination. Mm. And it's going to be very interesting later in this conversation when we talk about similar ambitions but are using that core control mechanism. I'm really looking forward to talking about that. Um, let's explore. But, but how, can, can, Sorry, go can ahead. I, you, you made, you made a, a comment earlier about mm. sophisticated versus... Um, like simple solutions. So oh, yes. our solution 
is elegant and powerful, but at the end of the day, it's very simple. Okay, mm-hmm. what we do is simple techniques and and ideas that I was able to convey, I think, to everyone mm-hmm. I spoke with, tech, non-tech, sure. any age, coming from any background. There are sophisticated solutions out there that people have been working a lot on, right? You have sharding in Ethereum, you have lightning in Bitcoin, you have a few other like, things happening also. there. Uh, yeah, pr- precisely. The problem is that sof- complicated and sophisticated solutions have complicated and sophisticated bugs. Okay, and they have edge cases that you really didn't think about coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a really interesting um, conversation with Raul Jordan. He's the guy who got funded from the Ethereum um, Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, the the company or the project calls. Um, um, prison labs or something like that. He's okay. the, he's working on the sharding part. Right. And I spoke with him. He's like, oh, we had this idea, but then we realized that we have that problem, and then we solved that using this mm. mechanism. But then, how do you prevent that? So it's really one of these things that keep right. rolding, and you've had and, more. And and these guys are smart, okay? right? But it's a hard way of going about them. Right. And also to save you time, because we could talk for hours on all these different <laughs> yes. ideas. Let's just use an analogy. Essentially, it's a band aid. Because you know, when you when problems come up with any platform, then they try they tr- we, we try to redress them, and essentially that's what we're talking about in this context. You're not a band aid. Right from the outset, you're trying to maintain simplicity. So a a we're definitely not a band aid. Okay, what we're doing is really we're fixing the thing the, the problem at layer zero. We're mm. removing the bottleneck right. and and giving the control to that different blockchain to to decide what to do with it right. but i wouldn't really call the others or not all of them band-aids okay some of them or the, take sharding again sharding as an example okay mm. if you ever try to shard a database and you realize how many problems could happen there and then you think about oh let's do that to a blockchain a decentralized blockchain you really say hmm that's not going to be a fun task. And it is really, really hard. Not because people are not doing a good job of it. It is a sophisticated solution. Vitalik is incredibly smart. Okay, so he is. I'm, 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 I'm in one of the groups on, tele, on Telegram sure. where, where like, I, I follow the conversation about some of the really high-end stuff happening. Right. And it's like, what is he talking mm-hmm. like every time he writes something sophisticated, I have to go and figure <laughs> out exactly because, and he takes a while because <laughs> he knows a lot about so many different topics. Sure. If he tells you that he's hoping to have sharding working in mm. time X or time Y, it's because he knows how hard that is going right. to be. Well, perhaps a better analogy is more, look, if we use the analogy of a building, essentially you are the foundation, you know, and it's a great analogy because we're talking about layers anyway. But, uh, uh, you know, if we refer to Vitalik for one moment, he is definitely building layer upon layer of his own infrastructure to support some of those challenges. To you know, to address them as well. Whereas you don't need to at this point. You are solely and wholly the foundation, the bedrock. I think that's a very good analogy because you could, if you think about that analogy, you could think, oh, I could build my house in like using a complete system of weights that if it tilted one way, it would pull the other way. Sure. You can do that, but it would be a lot easier and more efficient and better if you like. Oh, let's build on solid stone over there rather than. Would be than a good thing. In the, it, rather than in the blockchain swamp where everything keeps changing, right? So right. something like that. So the, 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 the infrastructure and kind of like the constructor construction exam, um, analogy, I think is a good one because you can do it, but mm-hmm. it's going to be hard and it's becoming harder and harder one if you have a problem with the foundation. Sure. Well, let's talk now about scalability in the sense of your proof. So where are you at right now in terms of, if you could tell us at this point in time, your tests, your prototypes, your demo, what can you really do? Sure. So, so uh, we're trying to be as, trans- as transparent about everything that we do. And, 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 and so I, I can tell you pretty much everything there is to say um, sure. at this point. So our starting point, Blockstrout start where Falcon Network ends. Okay, mm-hmm. Falcon was a great idea. It really helped, but it doesn't solve the scalability problem. Okay. It wasn't even created for that role. Its role was more of a let's make, put the smaller miner on par with the larger miners, so they're not disadvantaged. Okay. So the good part is that everything related to the network layer, okay, taking and doing cut-through routing. So cut-through routing is when you receive a block and you stream it as you receive it. So you don't wait until you receive it and only then send it, which is store and forward. Mm-hmm. But 
you receive it and you already stream it. So by the time the last packet arrived, you already sent everything else. Okay. All that networking part, we already had working coming before we, even, we, before we started. We took that and we built on top of that the provable mutual part. Mm -hmm. And then, and we already have the system working at a small scale. Mm -hmm. But what we really want to do, again, persuading people is really not the way and say, oh, this is how it should work. Mm -hmm. So we approach Bitcoin Unlimited. Okay, Bitcoin Unlimited is a is a development team mm -hmm. um, led by Peter Reason and 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 Andrew Stone and I probably forgetting none of them are the actual president. So I'm probably doing injustice to someone. Bill, on well, my apologies. I'll, I'll try whatever. and post them up for you. Don't worry. Perfect. So we approach um, Bitcoin Unlimited because these guys we don't have any special integration with them, but these guys has the most optimized code base out there today. They have their gigablock testnet the, the, and they wanted to see how many transactions per second mm -hmm. they can actually push. Mm -hmm. So they took it and they pressed the transaction per, per second gas pedal. Mm -hmm. And so how much they can do. And they found several um, um, bottlenecks in the code, in the implementation, because there are pieces of the code that were never written to handle large volume transactions per second. Right. Largest being, um, um, if you saw um, Peter R. And, and Andrew Stone's presentation in November about putting transaction in the mempool in a parallel rather than... So mm. that turned out to be the major um, um, bottleneck. Okay. Anyway, these guys were able to push 500 transactions per second in a small network, okay? 10 to 12 nodes, mm -hmm. 4 to 6 miners running on digital oceans um, infrastructure. So you have very good connectivity between them, very reliable network. Right. They were able to take, so their code is at a higher grade or prove, had been proved to be at doing more transactions per second than anybody else. Okay, so the Bitcoin and Unlimited, so how does that relate specifically to so, you now? So, how do we, we, connect so that? we went to them and said, we would like to collaborate with you. We want to take your code mm -hmm. and we want to, to show these guys had to stop at 500 transactions per second because then, according to Peter R. In his, in his presentation, he says, at that point, the block propagation time prevented us from going further. Okay. So we want to so, and we want to say, oh, can we take that, please? And th they have like, we took their script to create transaction per se, like, like transaction on the fly, etc. Mm -hmm. Said, can we take that, work with you guys, and take that code and deploy it? on a large scale, so hundreds or a thousand nodes or something like that. So mm -hmm. not in a small network, but a large real size network. Mm. And then we're going, we're going to do ourselves that pressing on the gas pedal. Mm. And I'm not sure at this point to tell you, this is the number of transactions per second we're going to do because we're going to hit a bunch of pseudo bottlenecks, okay? Pieces mm. of the code which were never optimized for high volume. So I don't know now to tell you which number we're going to hit. I see. So we're going to deploy it and we're going to run it and we're going to show you mm. how. So we're already working on it. It mm -hmm. already works at a small scale. And we have to do just deploying a network mm. is not like is a very unique skill that very few people have in, mm. in the world. So mm. I actually worked quite hard to getting the right people to work on that. Mm. We have a great team that did no, uh, it's not novel in the term of new technology, but they right. took really the cutting edge technology on kind of like um, um, Terraform on AWS and really kind of, oh, let's deploy mm. a complete network this way and that way. Mm. And we're working on that. Okay, well, we have the system working at a small scale. Our job, what we're doing is heads down really now working on showing that it works mm. on a large scale. Well, it sounds like that, Uri, you certainly would be cognizant of you know, general numbers in terms of capacity right now, and you're stalling a bit because you would know generally what the capacity is of your current tests and your product. You know, so 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 I I am not stalling. Then then if I can tell you, oh, we did five thousand transactions per second consistently, three, three but using three nodes. Mm. That has nothing to do with how much I'm going to do with a thousand nodes. So I'm not stalling. Mm. Okay, I can tell you, oh. Well, if let's talk about what you can do now, though. I, I, I can do, like, whether it's thousands, can we, like, 5,000, like, at a small scale, but that's not really the test. And how much we can do at a large scale, mm. I don't want to throw you a number, which later I'm going to say just half that amount, and you're like, oh, sure. you told me 5,000. Why are we doing 2,000? Sure. Like, well, as you'd appreciate, the, 
I respect this response because obviously it's not commonplace. The reason why I'm pushing is because we are getting the opposite response from the majority of, uh, you know, startups right now. And you would know some of them already. We're on stage, we're hearing the words millions very quickly. So that is why I'm pushing because quite simply we're seeing that premise and you don't want to be that model. You want to really evidence from, from evidence, from what you can show and not talk about. So I respect uh, that. If a, a, thank you. I will say the following. Whichever number that we're going to hit is not the real bottleneck. Okay. The number we're going, we're going to do X transaction mm. per second. And that is not going to be because blocks route can't do more. It's going to do because the blockchain application is not well optimized until that level. On our end, we can do a lot of transaction per second. I mean, a lot of them mm. because... Just, it, just, you do the numbers, okay? I'll, I'll just throw them. Well, it, your, it tone, you. your tone is confident. We understand clearly from your body language <laughs> that you're confident with your numbers. We don't need to go on. We know more specifically okay, with that. Let's, so, let's, let's. Let's, let's explore now your BDN in the sense of that stands for your blockchain distribution network and how that fits in to your overall model. In the term of... Well, so, it, so in the context of this, uh, perhaps I'm not clear. In the, in the sense that there is the peer-to-peer -peer network, but you are coupling that specifically with this global blockchain distribution network to really do something different. Right. So, so the idea is the following, right? We deploy a network which is going to serve all blockchains and all cryptos, okay? Mm -hmm. And we actually have fallback systems so we don't become the, like the single point of failure, etc. Right. But um, so we do that and we give everyone these magic gateways so they can utilize us without trusting us. Yep. And we provide it to everyone. And it turned out to be a very interesting like environment because Bloxroute only works if it converges to this win-win-win scenario where everyone are happy. Mm. Because if I give you that magic gateway, then I can't charge you, I don't know, let's say, oh, I want five dollars for, for like a monthly subscription. Mm. I can't charge you that because I can't prevent you from using Blockstrout anyway if you don't pay me, okay? Right. I'm provably neutral. I can't prevent anyone from using me, not users, not nodes, not miners, not transaction. Mm -hmm. I can't have me pay me to, to, to send their blocks faster. And if I could, you shouldn't use me anyway, okay? So it's kind of like we're, we're in a, this really unique position. Mm -hmm. And so we built the system kind of like to serve everyone where it only makes sense if everyone are happy. And generally speaking, the premise is the following. If we increase the transaction, if we increase the transaction per second by more than a factor of a thousand, mm -hmm. okay, so by more than a factor of a thousand, then then users could pay a hundred times smaller fees than what they're paying. Okay, so that's the first win. Okay, users are happy paying significantly lower fees. Got it. Miners, so that's the first win. Miners get much smaller fee per transaction, so a hundred times smaller, but a thousand times more transaction per second. Mm -hmm. So in total, they make 10 times more, okay? So my, that's a second win. Miners are happy, they make more money. And for Bloxroute, Bloxroute, we give, we only capture something like 0.1% of the value that we create, okay? Mm -hmm. We create, we give 99.9% .9 of the value that we create to users and miners. Okay. Blockstroke can't can't enforce anything, okay? Because but it allows it allows users to use its service to this fee reduction service, okay? We allow users to pay us so their total fee is reduced. Right. Now we do that by aligning the incentives the right way. So mm -hmm. generally, not to confuse stuff, the idea is that nobody has to pay us if you take your you're, you make a transaction, you go to Starbucks, you buy with your crypto wallet. Mm -hmm. You don't know who blocks start out. You really don't care. Mm -hmm. You don't care if it costs you half a cent or a quarter of a cent. You really don't care. Right. Then you don't pay blocks route. But if you make a lot of transactions per second, which some businesses are, so think about... Almost, well, almost all thing. enterprises are going to. That's the whole point. Yeah, that's kind of like the point. But even now, okay, the, so, so um, um, now there is this new um, memo.cash project, okay, which is kind of like a Twitter right. on a blockchain. Sure. Which I found, like, I, I really didn't get what's the thing about, it, like, what, who would be, like, <laughs> like, excited about it. And then I looked into it and, like, right. wow, this is so much fun. 
So that thing already creates 2,000 transactions per day. So if that, but that's completely out there. But if you have a business doing these volumes, yeah. then you might want, you're going to say, oh, it makes sense for me to pay blocks route a tiny portion of that already 100 times smaller fee. Mm -hmm. It might make sense for me if my total amount is reduced. And the way that we reduce that mm -hmm. fee is we don't do anything, right? We're provably neutral. We can't. Mm -hmm. But we align the incentive so that we create all this capacity and some of it is reserved. A fraction of it is reserved for transactions that do pay. Right. Yes. So miners, not us, when a miner sees such a transaction that pay blocks route, mm -hmm. you can say, oh, you know what? I have extra capacity here that I can put in there. So that doesn't have to like compete and like supply and demand, which you get with a regular transaction. There is extra room here. I'm going mm. to require less of an incentive, less of a fee to include that kind of transaction. Mm. So nobody has to pay Blockstrap ever. Okay. Ever. So like you said, it's, it's, a, it's a tripartite win. You know, win, win, win. Yeah. It's, it's even written in your white paper. I have read that. So, and we will explore, uh, you know, a little bit further down the track in terms of just how valuable that system can be in terms of revenue, because we're going to explore your reserve system. And, and I want to reserve that so, for later. <laughs> but okay. what I wanted to do with that win-win is bring one more uh, component into the conversation. And that is specifically enterprise. Because we're moving now into a space whereby scalability is coupled specifically with the requisites of enterprise. So how are you going to be the layer, layer zero protocol that attracts enterprise when others are trying to do the so, same? So, so honestly, I... W I already did, to the extent of that I had very large enterprises coming for us and say, oh, we were thinking of stepping into this space, but we need to know that the scalability is already solved. Okay, I was mm -hmm. like by some of our investors and some of our, our partners. So how said, do you show oh. them, Uri? How do you show them? So first, uh, first of all, I tell them, don't take my word. Wait another, is that month or two months from mm -hmm. where we are now? Mm -hmm. Wait until we show you. Okay, I'm going to explain you how we do it. And these right. are very smart people. So they got the idea and I said, okay, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But they shouldn't take my word for it. They should wait until I show them that it works. So and that's... And that's Uri, the, can I ask you something direct? Why do they have to wait? Why can't you show them something? Oh, I can show them something, but it's... it's I, I'm a scientist, okay? Right. And we are a group of scientists. We believe in hard, cold evidence okay mm -hmm. i need to show you that it were, I, I will even take another step being a scientist you know that simulations are worthless right. okay take a simulation you want to show something is working and it doesn't so like, how about we tweak that parameter that nobody even knows that it exists because mm -hmm. you write about three parameters and you're using like 50 because you can't really describe them all mm -hmm. like oh if you do this and that oh the simulation works okay simulations are worth very little in mm -hmm. the real world if you want to show something is working Mm -hmm. then you have to really actually show them. And for me to show them how it works nicely with three nodes mm -hmm. is really worthless. Okay, I can show you there, but, 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 okay. but well, that's no proof at all. Well, one thing's for sure, you've made it very clear that A, you have enterprise interest that's very strong. B, you have conversations clearly with some of these big players. And C, they're, at, they're lined up at the door. But let's talk, I want to find out <laughs> how many are you engaging with right now? Or are you literally waiting until you unfurl? and unfold as a technology? So we have a lot of interest of people approaching us and it could be a bunch of stuff. So it could be enterprises, mm. but it's also all sorts of so lots of investors and, mm. and crypto. The, the, the funnest part is when crypt, like the developer group in some community or some blockchain say, mm. oh, we want to use you. Mm -hmm. um, we recently um, um, were, we, we were talking with um, Ravencoin Right. which is a group which I like. So we spoke with them and said they were very interested. And so we said, okay, mm. wait until we can actually show you, but we have been approached. Um, I've been blathering and I don't remember. That's okay. What, 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 about, <laughs> what about mainstream business though? Like, let's talk about examples like banks. Let's talk about uh, you know, really mainstream businesses that could transition utilizing something like you. Have you had conversations so, with that you know, sector as well? So, so intentionally or semi-intentionally, no. Our job is not to c communicate with the bank and tell mm. them, oh, you could do this with Hyperledger, or you could do mm. this with Ethereum, or you, like, 
we're interested in that. We have our thoughts on that. And mm. we're like, okay, we, we're people who, who think too, much, too highly of themselves already. So we <laughs> think our ideas are the best. And you're like, sure. oh, you should do this and that. And, and, and really, uh, among us, um, so Goon, um, Professor Emin Goon here, sure. really has a very well-rounded understanding of mm. so many aspects of blockchains and crypto. Mm. But that's not our focus. We are... You can't do it all. So what we say, we're laser focused on providing that for all blockchain and crypto. Sure. It's the job of entrepreneur, other entrepreneurs, other products, other protocols, other, I don't know, startups mm. to go to the bank to say, oh, do this, do that. Our job th at this point is solely on s providing the scalability solution which scales everybody. I see. That's what we're doing. I see. And that's certainly so, you know, setting you apart from many of the different uh, startups right now. Almost all. Not so, all, but almost all. So, so, so yeah, but, but I, I, also, I also had a very interesting... Um, so I'm Chicago-based, mm -hmm. and I had an interesting um, conversation with a developer here when I went to the meetup of, of Disruption Joe from the um, Chicago blockchain project. Right. And... We had a very nice conversation about, and he says, oh, I want to do this, but then I have this problem, the scalability problem. And, and we talked about it, and we both agreed that you have to focus on one thing. You can't solve it all, okay? Mm. Or let's say differently, Vitalik can try to solve it all. Vitalik is one person, okay? Mm. Satoshi Nakamoto, or, which might or might not be a single person, okay? right. but they really brought it. A very whole-rounded kind of like solution which has so many aspects. Right. For almost everybody else, do one thing very, very well rather than try to solve all the problems in parallel mm. and end up not solving any of them. So we're really laser focused on that. Absolutely. Well, perfect segue into one person in particular I wanted to talk to you about, and that is Eminence, obviously a very lead person. You mentioned him before. Uh, he is with, I understand, Cornell. Uh, and you have partnerships with Cornell and Northwestern, yourself being from that university. But just how important is he as the chief scientist in your team uh, in really leading out some of this research and some of this application? So it started up, we are full partners, okay? We are really equal parts of the company and we're, we're, we're all 100% working on, on doing that. Mm -hmm. But... We all have very different roles. For, I did not plan on do being the CEO at all. I mm -hmm. was planning to be the CTO doing all the implementation. Mm -hmm. But Subia, who built the Falcon Network, really blew me out of the water. Okay, he came and he said, oh, let's do this. <laughs> and every time I tried helping with anything, I just got in the way and then calling him up at like 2 a.m. saying, right. Subia, I'm trying to deploy this and it doesn't work. What's <laughs> So everybody is doing something different in our you know. At the beginning, when we had to come up with a design mm -hmm. and kind of like, okay, solving all the problem, making sure it all ticks as an idea, we sat down in the room and really covered all that. So, so that's what we did. At the point right now, each of us is leading on a different way. Okay, so Goon's role right now is very different than what it used to be at the beginning. Goon's mm -hmm. role right now is, A, help us facilitate a lot of the collaboration because he's connected with everybody out there. It certainly is. And he's... And also making sure that we are competitive, we know we stay on top of what's, what's happening because this space is really going in all directions mm. at once. Right? And, so and, really and, what's, and, and what's fascinating about you is that obviously myself knowing many different startups and, and having read many different white papers is that typically you see someone like Gun as an advisor. And he's not in your case. He's actually directly involved as so part of your Gun, team. So Gun had been the advisor, I would say dozens of... He of has of crypto startups and projects out there. I don't know the number, but Several. really, so so many, mm. okay? But when we came with this idea, which is kind of like it came from both our end and their end, so we mm. started collaborating and it turned into this whole idea. And he said, he said, well, this is too good of an idea. This is like, this is solving the scalability problem. But like, mm. I want to be hands-on on this. We, we need to, th this is the project okay so we're all working on it together it's a very it, it is the only project that mm. had said oh th this is me this is what i'm doing and that's because, huge that is truly huge given his status yeah he really goon is 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 really uniquely positioned in this space okay there the, um we, we had a funny conversation when he told me what, what, he was working on a proof of work that's 2007, 2000, like prior to the Bitcoin white paper. Amazing. And when the Bitcoin pi white paper came out, then he said like, he read it, he said like, oh, what's that? And then he moved back to the references and like, 
Am I being referenced? Am I being <laughs> No, I'm not being Why am I not? You know, yeah, this is what I say. Of, like, and that like, just indicates we academia, his... academia pe people are like that. We, all sure. we want is to be referenced here <laughs> and there. But it's kind of like, so, so he really, he, he's really a, kind of like, like a, a, a cypher punk, kind of like back old school kind of thing. Yes, and I really appreciate that. I've actually read some of his papers and he is truly one of the, the innovators and one of the instigators of some, a, lot, a lot of this research. So kudos to him. And he's, his, he's also, he's, oh, thank you. He's also the co-director of IC3, which is also a significant player on the research or mm -hmm. everything blockchain. Yes, well, you know, his credentials are really just an endless list. Um, if we could talk now about your token, I really want to dig deep because there is not a lot of information about this and I want to unpack it now. And that is with regard to your token stats. I want to talk about what are you thinking with ICO, B, the, the BLXR itself as a token. Let's explore it. So, 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 so I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn between, oh, this is a cool idea. Let me tell you about it. And on the other hand, I want to first make it absolutely clear. Hmm. This is something to happen in the future. Okay, the idea is for us to show it's working, to show our value, and then to allow others from the ecosystem to invest in us because we feel it's the right thing to do. We want to allow people to invest in us be because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It also aligns the incentive of everyone. So when does, the, when does the sense come? I don't have an exact time of when we're going to do it. Our timeline is the following. Now we're heads down showing that the system is working. After that is done, that's the time when we really go out with collaborations and going to people because I want to go to um, 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 Vitalik and Fluffy Pony and Roger Ver and mm -hmm. Zuko and, and, all, the, all, and all, the, all these people. And, and I have the connection at this point like to connect them and say like, Here's a working system. I actually, some of them were like considering like we were like, oh, should we talk? Et cetera. Mm -hmm. and like, Let's for, let me, let me show you that it's working. I don't want to persuade you that it's working. So sure. we have, that's what we're doing right now. Following that, what we want is real world traction. We want to help. We want to scale. Right. After that, we're going to talk about, okay, about investing and kind of like allowing people to get part, to be part of the system. Okay. So you want to do it in so, so, logical steps. Yeah, yeah, and it makes no sense to do it any other way. I feel like, mm. oh, I want to sell you an idea before mm. I have a product that I can show you that it's valuable. It makes, well, let's I, talk, know, let's I, know, I know it's very common today <laughs> with crypto and, mm. and ICOs and token sales, but right. that's not what we're going well, to do. Well, let's talk about so, it, though, for a moment. I do want to address this. Sure, sure, but, 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 but I, sure. I, I wanted to, to emphasize that point. It's not what we're doing now. Right, and that was really clear. And I, we, It's nice and refreshing to hear someone speaking, especially the CEO, about doing things very very different to the, you know, the typical and normative behavior we're seeing. So, you know, again, it's, it, it's certainly interesting to say the least, but let's explore fundamentally the premise for why ICOs do exist now, and that is fundraising. Many of these startups simply cannot access funds through the mainstream routes. So no pun intended through Blocks route, but that is why many of them do it. So how are true, you generating true, fun? How are you raising funds? So, so you're absolutely correct, and 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 to that extent, I take some of my 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 remark about like, oh, how can you? Yeah, okay. If if someone says, if this is a fund, mo, in most cases, this is a funding mechanism. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's not a funding mechanism. Okay, okay? we don't need funds. We're not ready. And this, which goes back to, why are we intending to do a token sale? Okay, mm -hmm. we don't we don't do it to fund our our operation. Mm -hmm. And so I had a very interesting um, conversation with Jamie from from Villar, um, Pillar um, VC, mm -hmm. and he asked me, "So why why are you doing it? Why do you want to do a token?" Perfect sale? question. That and was the, coming. <laughs> and and the idea is that we're pr pr building this provable neutral like infrastructure. We're a company it's going to generate revenues, but if money is going to be pouring, f if, if we make a product that people are going to use, and we'll be seeing money flowing from the crypto ecosystem into blocks route. Mm -hmm. I would like to see, to see it pouring back into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I think it would make people happier and, and, and feeling better towards blocks route if it's not just, oh, a single entity, a single company that makes money. I would rather have it be sent back to the crowd as much as I can. Sure, and okay, that's, so so that's, that's the core function of the token. I wanted to, because you uh, brought... let, let me, say, let me mm. say something important before anything else. Okay. The token, this is not a utility token. 
Nobody has to use it in order to use Blockstrout. It doesn't have anything to do with it. Blockstrout provides its service for free for mm -hmm. everyone with open source, regardless of BLXR. Okay. And if someone wants to pay Blockstrout in order to reduce the fees they can, it has nothing to do with the BLXR token. So what so is that's it? Just put, so what is so it? Here, so here what BLXR is, okay? What we're doing is the following thing. 50% of the future revenues of Bloxroute are going to go to the company itself in order to, to, to pay for development and, and infrastructure and all the costs that, that mm. come with providing like an infrastructure for everyone and to do all that. That's half of the amount. Mm, right. But half of it is going to go to the BLXR reserve. Okay, there is, it's the reserve is just a giant pile of crypto. It's a pool so, of funds. Yes, but on different blockchains. So if you're using Ethereum and you pay blocks out because you want lower fees, so you'll have some Ethereum pouring in and Bitcoin pouring in and Bitcoin mm. Cash and sure. Zcash and Monero, whatever. Everyone that we serve will get like these small streams. So the result, these half of them go to the company and half of them go to a reserve. And what we're going to also do is to issue a capped amount of BLXR, the R token. Right. So let's say the following. If we each, we're going to issue a, 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 a capped amount. So let's say we issue 100 of them. Mm -hmm. If you own one of these tokens, then 1% of that BLXR pile is yours. You can always take your token, mm -hmm. give it to the reserve, and in exchange, get 1% of the Monero, 1% of the Bitcoin, 1% of the Zcash, whatever is in there. I see. So you can always cash it out. Mm -hmm. The remaining 99% belong to the other 99 um, tokens. Yours burn and go outside of circulation. So right. they're unaffected by the fact that you cashed out. And the result of this mechanism is that the BLXR reserve and the BLXR token act as a crypto index, okay? So which not only is diversified across the different cryptos and blockchains, mm -hmm. it automatically adjust toward the crypto which is used the most in reality. So if tomorrow a new crypto comes to town and it's the, the becoming the dominant thing, mm. the streams of, of, of payments coming from them will tilt the BLXR towards that crypto. Right. So the result of that is that if you buy BLXR, you kind of like it's a diversified investment in the crypto ecosystem as a whole. Absolutely. Which also... And an improvement to align everyone's incentive. Okay. If crypto space succeed, Blockstrope succeeds, and vice mm. versa. You've made and it really so, clear. You made it really clear that the structure of this token is really to be a security. From what you're saying, the word so, investment. So it, it, it is a security. If mm. you want, and and this is not a utility token. It's a security. And if you want to say, oh, I want, the, I want this. This has two parts. Mm. It's an investment in Blockstrope. If you want to see part of that stream of, of payments go your way, so some of it is yours, mm -hmm. then that's a, an investment vehicle. Sure. And it's also a crypto index at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now I want to pay to just to say, add one more thing to it. And that is whatever amount is in there today, okay, your BLXR, let's say is, a, is worth one Bitcoin, one Bitcoin Cash, sure. one Ethereum, one Monero. Yep. Tomorrow it can only be worth more in other cryptos, okay? So whatever is in there today, the amount of crypto in there only goes up. And we mm -hmm. said that if you cash out, nobody, like it doesn't affect other people. So sure. it is kind of like an investment in an index mm -hmm. and the amount that it can go can, in terms of other crypto can only go up. So if mm -hmm. all the market go up, the value of your token go up. Mm -hmm. If all the market goes down, mm -hmm. the, value, the value in US dollars goes down. But in terms of other cryptos, mm -hmm. Whatever it is worth today, tomorrow can only be worth sure. more. It's very reminiscent of a stock, the way it operates in the stock market. So I wanted to ask you this, and that is, how are you going to address the concerns of the, the international landscape of complexity when it comes to legality, when it comes to you know, the, you know, the SEC, for example, because clearly that's a challenge. So um, it, it's a funny question. When we said when we when we started talking with investors about Blockstrout and being a part, I told I, I told them I told my partner, I said I want to raise a million dollars so I can take one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and throw it at Cooley 
which has and specifically at Patrick Merck, okay, working huh. at Cooley. I really like that guy. He's very bright. He's lo- like he knows everything there is to know, and mm. he's a very likable guy. Right. Like I want you guys to come and make sure everything is done right in terms of legal mm-hmm. taxation and and finance. Everything done right from day one. Okay? So you're so you're doing we don't that. Want to f- so, yeah, yeah, that's the first thing mm. that we did. We okay. ended up, l- l- like, raising a different number because we were actually oversubscribed mm-hmm. and we had to make some, re- like, it was it, it was a great seed round funding that was sure. very fun. But long story short, the idea is that we have people working on it for months now to making mm-hmm. sure everything makes sense. Mm-hmm. We have the best people working on that. Mm-hmm. And even true that in that scenario, nothing is never... 100% clear, as I understand it, from the legal perspective. Nothing until you like that. But things today are much clearer than mm-hmm. they were a year ago. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, we're not trying to do this game where, oh, we're... At, I see what you're saying. Tell, say, you're not, not a like, pseudo so utility. Yeah, do, yeah, doing like, like, uh, like all these weird attempts yep. to create a utility token where it's actually a security token. Absolutely. So they try to kind of like just kind of like avoid the regulation mm. we're here we say oh this is what we do it's mm. very simple we're going to follow all the rules by the way like we're doing it right from mm. day one we're not trying to make any like funny games sure. in order to get and, some advantage and your transparency is what's going to put you again potentially in pole position because there are very few that are being transparent right now and and saying right from the outset that they are a security and those that are are going to be pushed through first it's just the reality of this game so it is exciting that you're you know, acknowledging what you are. And I appreciate that because, as you've said, in a different way, there are many false securities pretending to like they're pretending. Yeah, that, yeah, it, it, it is. And, and, and on that note, I would actually argue that a lot of the things happening in the crypto space don't really make sense. OK, everybody are trading them mm. and they're calling it trading them to an extent. It's gambling with them. Oh, will it go up? Will it go down? Without really understanding the fundamental and how things are working, what they're trying to achieve. Mm. A lot of them are really cool applications and really cool tokens, but they really shouldn't be on a blockchain of their own or have a utility token of their own. The only reason that they have a utility token is because they're trying to kind of like, like, yeah, or for trade or because they're trying to, to, to like sidestep the regulation but really you should be paying them like oh it's a really cool service it's Mm. awesome it even makes sense that it's on a blockchain you should be paying it with bitcoin or ethereum or like very few Mm. like i'll i'll say privacy blockchains make sense okay Mm. it's kind of like oh we're adding something can they be done on top of Ethereum or Bitcoin, Bitcoin sure. cash kind of thing? Maybe, and, maybe not. And, and we not could sure. argue that as well because sometimes they don't make sense from the standpoint of governments. They simply don't sometimes. So, you know, there's roles for certain things, but certainly the point you're making is that first and foremost is use case. If there's no use case, there's really no point. Really? Yeah, that, that, that is it. And even, and even if there is a use case for the application, the mm. use case of the token should be like, why is that done just Good so point. they can do a large token sale? At a very mm. high percentage of the mm. time, they think the answer is yes. Sure. And hence, we do appreciate how you separated your own technology with your token you know, objective. So thank you for making that clear. Let's now talk about your competitors, Uri, because there are some layer zero designs that are coming. And they are trying to do something. You know, we're talking about uh, Totoran. We're talking about you know, others. You, you'd know them. It's your job to know. So tell us about whether you're concerned at all. Or whether there's a place for so, these to, you know, so, so for, first of all, I, I, I would, I would like, 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 just to clarify thing. The guy who knows everything about everything is Professor Emin Gunsir. Gun really knows, and it's kind of like <laughs> he gets like these questions from really experts all over the world about, mm. oh, so how about this? I don't want to specify anything. But does that make sense? Is that a real thing? Was that broken? Or not broken. It's kind of like the, the, he really knows everything there, e- almost mm. everything there is to know. So sure. I would not put myself on par mm-hmm. with with him on knowing everything there is to know. I do know quite a lot about the landscape of 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 this industry, and I would say the following. Well, let's focus on layer zero, though. That's where I want to go. So, so layer zero are or there are a few of them. I have yet to see 
what, like promises are easy. Okay, mm. it's also very easy for me. I can tell you why it should work, and mm. I have well. Well, that's the I challenge very, for it. Well, that's the challenge for the person concerning considering your utility or your in your case your security is that true, literally we're true, listening true. to all of these statements. True, but it's very hard. If I'm a network computer networks expert, it's going to be very hard for you to refute my arguments, even if I'm wrong. Okay, mm -hmm. because I like you'll tell me something and I'll throw some like technical gibberish at you and I'll say, oh, but this and that and this and that. Well, if you can and prove it's, it, yeah, no, no, sure, but I nobody can prove like with arguments. It's no, I mean through your almost actions, nobody can, through your technology precisely that, through your operation. precisely. So I have, what what we want to do is to show that it's working. That, mm -hmm. That's what we're doing right now. Right. I have yet to see, even coming from very well-respected people and coming like projects that everybody are talking about and very excited about, mm -hmm. I want to see them working at the large scale in reality. Until you show me that, mm -hmm. then, 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 well, I'm you're in, not really. I, I, I have so, to tell so you, we're excited to see yours. You know, you're, you're so, clearly so, so, in that state, and you know it can be done. We're looking forward to seeing that. So, so uh, the good news is that it's coming really soon. But let me add mm. something on top of that. Right. Blocks route, what it's really solving is the following um, 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 argue, or kind of solving the following problem. The more transaction per second that we're doing, the more information, not even talking about blocks, the more information that has to be propagated through the entire system mm -hmm. in order for everyone to understand Oh, this is the current status of the blockchain. Okay, it, that just as it is. That period of time where the system kind of like figures out what's the current status mm -hmm. is a time in which it can't be productive. Because if it is productive, it creates a fork. Okay, um, sure. that's a rephrasing of an argument of, of Andrew Stone. Actually, I think he has a paper on it. Mm -hmm. The idea is that that time is really, it can't be used for, for, to make progress. It, that's the time where everybody think can't be used to, to create progress. Mm -hmm. And that time grows linearly when we increase the number of transactions per second. So increase it by a factor of 1,000, that time is going to increase by a factor of 1,000. And be, at that point, it's very fast, it's going to exceed the time in which, like, like yes. in Bitcoin, it's 10 minutes, but whatever that is. So we're talking about Almost concurrent all... scaling, we're talking about concurrent yeah. and parallel scaling. Yes, but even with so so, so let, let me finish that argument and, mm -hmm. and, and then go back to your to your comment. So mm -hmm. even things which are very exciting, if they're not solving the networking problem of propagating information fast on the one hand mm -hmm. without root sacrificing the trustlessness and provable neutrality, mm -hmm. then they can save, they can give you the performance, but they're sacrificing something else. One mm -hmm. of these things that you can really easily think is... Um, um, hash graph. I, so I wasn't even thinking about hash graph. I was thinking about EOS. I was in, I forgot their expert's name, Dan Dan Larimer. I, oh, Dan Larimer. Yes. So I was in the previous consensus. Um, I, I, I heard heard their presentation mm -hmm. and the entire um, um, delegated proof of stake. So DPOS, yes. right? Yes. The idea is that, okay, you give it to a few actors and between them, we just make everything smaller. So we, like for the time it takes for information to propagate, it really helps there. And mm -hmm. their argument is if someone acts in an evil, non-fair way, Malicious. it would be replaced by the others. But if you take that and take apply it to the real world, think about if you elect it's, it's utopian. Know, a, a senator or, or I don't know, some, some elected official, mm. and the fact that they misbehave doesn't really, so, so it's not a one-to-one -one thing, right? You, you could think about several actors that support each other, so mm. they kind of like even, up. it's not that simple. So that, can it help with scalability? Yes, but what are you sacrificing along the way? Now, mm. I can tell you if it's a great idea or a really bad idea, and I'm not even the one to call the shot. It's the mm. market and real-world traction, real value for real people mm. is going to decide on that. But it's definitely changing, changing the paradigm, right? So they sidestep mm. the problem by saying, not everybody has to be a part. Some would Whereas you make oh. everyone a part of it, and that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, the idea is yes. The idea is that... 
at the protocol layer, mm. it has to remain the same. Okay, people could tell you, oh, why not just take the five largest um, mining pools, connect them mm. with mm. fiber optics, and they know each other, and like, okay, what's the problem? Mm. You could sell that they're very fast. But that means that other people can't join in, right? They can really throw out everybody else because they can reject everything else and they mm. if they're the five biggest so so you really change the entire model and our idea is not to touch the model mm. and other layer zero um, um, solutions if they want to succeed they have to solve the same problem they have to 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 allow information like and allow the system to sync very very fast and if they mm -hmm. don't do that then they're not going to succeed i say now going back to your comment earlier mm. um there's a lot of connection between so sharding is the idea of making smaller think about like piece like smaller blockchain then the security of one they can like interact with each other in a way that kind of like merge them together right to get the security of all of them together so sure. that's sim that's similar to a solution that try to take several different blockchains and kind of like make them work together mm -hmm. that model could say oh let's just have like i don't know a million small blockchains but the security of each one of these blockchain is significantly smaller right if every if, like the amount of hashing power you need in order to compromise one mm -hmm. is a lot smaller right it's not like everyone combined so it's not that simple right. and when you try to solve it in like smart ways it turned out again this goes back it's a sophisticated solution, mm -hmm. and, it's, and, it's, and it's really hard in reality. Okay, so you want to keep it simple, but also make sure that it's applicable and that it is leading the way. And no doubt you have the team to do it. Uh, obviously, it's been a really robust conversation. There's been so much that you've thrown at us, and we've had to explore that, and I really appreciate your transparency. But I did want to go back to one thing, because it's going to be on the minds of everyone. Let's just go back to the, token, the tokenomics once more. <laughs> we have to do it. Can you tell us... Again, like, do you have a model at all, or a distribution model? Do you have any idea about the total number, or do you have any idea about anything to do with your token? The idea is the following. I, I can tell you this. The idea for, for the entire thing to work, we're going to, it's going to be a token sale, right? We're going to sell it for other, if you want to invest, and there's going mm -hmm. to be a number saying, oh, this is how much it's worth. Yeah. And the cool part of, of our token is that whatever you bought in, half of it, whatever you've paid, half of it goes immediately to the reserve. Okay. So half of it goes back to the investors. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk percentage because I have some, we've been like talking internally about some numbers, but I don't feel solid enough. And that's not our focus right but now. The key, it's the, not what we do. I guess the key thing is though, that you have a plan in mind to do some sort of ICO and you clearly want to involve the process and allow people to access your security. So, 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 a yes, we're going to do a token sale. I, I prefer the term token sale and an ICO. Ethereum was an ICO, okay, okay. or like the, the initial coin offering, like mm -hmm. creating your own blockchain. Sure. Like we're going to create a token, which allow again, it's going to allow to people to invest in us. Okay. Now, how much is that going to worth? It's going to be very simple. If we show that the the like, I'm going to show that the crypto show you how much it work, and I'm mm -hmm. going to do. 5,000 transactions or 50,000 transactions per second, mm -hmm. or on the other side, if I do 50, right, mm. it's kind of like that's going to change the number that's going to of happen. Course. After that, if I have all the top 10 crypto using blocks route, like a lot of them getting interested and in kind of like using that, the mm. value is going to be higher in comparison to like everybody is saying and saying like, oh, I'm getting two of them, okay, right. or one of them, okay. or none of them, or only small ones, etc., sure. etc. So, the, I I can throw numbers around, but only, but it's not set in stone. Uh, like th 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 that, mm. th th these will be just like okay, my own assumptions, and sure. I don't want to say well, like, okay, that's Yuri, the, the whole point was really just to unpack and explore the general intentions at this point because that's where you're at. So and I appreciate I'll, I'll, that. I'll tell you my general intention. Okay, if I could sell that and allow everyone to invest, kind of like how utility token are used, mm. I would do that. Okay, I would love it to to spread it as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Legal reality is that I probably can't, okay? I probably have to do that through larger players, accredited investor, these kind of things. Sure. Um, I spoke with Andy from Coinlist. We had a great conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I really like them. Not in that we're definitely going to use them or not going to use sure. them, but we're, like, we're considering different platforms in that space, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, I would like to allow as many people 
to be part of that investment. We're going to do like rounds. I would like to do that. No, no so we, uh, we're not going to do rounds. We're going okay. to sell it to everyone. We're not like, oh, we make some money and then try to make more money out of other people. That's not our Okay. Intent. So just to be clear, you've so, had a seed round. You have done that though. Yeah, so, so seed round was very successful. I, I'm, I, I will even tell you a small anecdote about that, just okay. because it's interesting. And okay. I don't care, I'm going over time. <laughs> Go for it, no problem. It's, it's your we, show. Don't, we don't mind, because we're learning about what is a very exciting layer one, layer zero technology. So, so we, I, we started, I'm a technical guy, okay? So we said, let's not start talking with the largest player in the market, mm. like the blockchain capital, Pantera, mm -hmm. like DCG of the world. Because at the first time I'm going to talk with people, I'm going to, it's kind of like the first pancake. I'm going to burn it. I'm going to ruin it. Right. So let's start with the smaller players. And so, but we started talking with investors in for, to do a seed round. Because as I told you, I said, I want a million dollars because <laughs> I want 250K to throw it coolly, which sure. isn't, I'm throwing these numbers. They're not exact. So I'm not sure, sure. if I should or not, but they're sure. not exact anyway. So. I understand. But, they're just generic numbers but, but, to illustrate. Yeah, yeah so, so, but that's the number that we came at and we said, okay, later we're, we're, we're going to, like, I would like to have the rest of it so we can do whatever I want and I can go and meet with people without okay. me thinking twice before hiring a new developer, etc. Okay. So we started that, but it became very clear that people want to invest in us. And that could be well concerned human, VCs and angels and like of course. a bunch of these. And then... I got my first term sheet within a week and a half of opening my mouth. Okay, I think I, I don't think a lot of have have reached these these speeds, and we closed it within two and a half weeks, and we closed it in the following way: we realized that we have the technology, and we have the the knowledge, and we have we we have the code, we have all of that, but we are technical people. We mm. don't know how to build like large companies to last for years we don't have that component right and we don't have the entire me marketing the resources like PR, kind of like related all these stuff so we had to we brought in very significant players to be our partners to help us to do these things so we brought in first and foremost flybridge from yes. boston these guys are super professional okay these guys know how to build very large technological companies okay very large so they okay. really know to have to do that both as kind of like founders and as VCs. So, so they, they're really great. So we brought them yeah. to help us to build a business around, to make sure everything ticks. Right. And so we have that. And I met with Nick from One Confirmation, mm -hmm. who's great. And he kind of like did the PR and marketing for Coinbase. I think he was their first non-technical employees. So That's he, pretty significant. He did that for Coinbase. So he's kind of like, he knows everything there is to know about that space. I said, okay, if you can do that for Coinbase, he can do that for us. He right. know what we need to do in this space in order to succeed. So we brought them in. Mm -hmm. And we brought in, I met Lucas at Metastable. I met with Naval. They were also very interested. So mm -hmm. we brought all of them together. And these are kind of like, that our, was our starting point. We did that seed round. That was the only round that we did. We're not going to do any more rounds. The okay. idea is like, Okay, we got oversubscribed there. People were kind of like elbowing each other for of course they were. on there. I, I, I don't know. It turns out that like, like that, that <laughs> must be humbling. People must be humbling to know that <laughs> there, there was a lot of people lining up to support and invest. I can say invest here because you are in security. But now we're talking about one, you know, a one stop approach, one stop shop approach. It's just one, you know, point of access from this point forward. Yes, yes, we're not good. Yes, it's going to be that we're, we're, we're trying to be as fair as possible. We mm -hmm. want to be super transparent about what we do. Right. And it's kind of like, yes, we're going. And, but I will say that, I said at the beginning, I will reiterate it on, that, uh, on it now. That's not what we're doing now. I'm like, like yes, everybody are excited and mm. token and kind of like, oh, can we invest in yep. these kind of things? That's not our focus. We're going to do that after I show you guys that we're really valuable. Okay, so clearly we can look forward to that in the roadmap when it all unfolds and when you start to let the world know when it happens. But you have made it very clear there's only going to be one way to do it from this point forward. So Yuri, yes. you've, you've really addressed everything right now and I thank you so much for your time. Is there anything that you want to say to your audience? Obviously there's social media channels to learn more about, about Blocks Route. What would you like to say as a final statement to us all? Wow, I didn't think about anything that I want to say as a final statement. So first of all, um, thank you for having me. It's been great fun. Likewise. Um, I will say the following. It's not like this super message or something, sure. but really 
the the crypto space really should start focusing again on real world traction real value for real people in the real world okay this is all that matters okay right. that's what we're trying to do we're trying to support that and enable that this is all that matters mm -hmm. cool ideas that don't really get anybody anything they're, they're really there's nothing to it and so this is like forget about technology is cool and it's very fun and, and all of that but always like I, I i think at blocks route we keep it very like we're very conscious about level it. level-headed. Like, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's not about trading is meaningless. It's gambling at this point. Valuation is meaningless. It really has nothing to do with how much the, like the value of the different tokens, etc. It really though there is a giant disconnect there. Sure. This is not it. Our focus and what Bloxos is is about mm -hmm. is taking all that space and really pushing it to the real world. Absolutely. I well, hope that was a special I, statement, which kind of like makes sense. <laughs> well, that's fine. I mean, Yuri, Yuri Klarman, you are the CEO of Bloxroute. You have informed us about pretty much every facet of the company. So thank you very much for that. Your slogan is scaling blockchains today for businesses of tomorrow. So on behalf of all of us who wanted to know more, we do thank you for this exclusive interview. And I certainly look forward to following you and, and calling you up when we know about the tokenomics as our next conversation. Sure, sure thing. It's been great fun. No worries. Thank you very much, mate.